Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today is February 4th, 2020. And that means that today is the 50th anniversary of the death of poet Louise Bogan. She's a poet that I've read a few poems from over the last few months. She was an American poet and was the fourth poet laureate to the Library of Congress in 1945 and spent much of her life as a poetry reviewer for The New Yorker. And the poem that I'm going to read today, uh, I wanted to read in recognition of her life and her work, and it is called Men Loved Holy Beyond Wisdom. It goes like this. Men loved holy beyond wisdom have the staff without the banner. Like a fire in a dry thicket rising within women's eyes is the love men must return. Heart, so subtle now and trembling, what a marvel to be wise, to love never in this manner. To be quiet in a fern, like a thing gone dead and still listening to the prisoned cricket shake its terrible, dissembling music in the granite hill. This is a fascinating poem that is full of very, very interesting images that'll get your imagination going and uh, perhaps be a little confusing at times. For example, we have the staff without the banner, um, which suggests of knights riding into, into battle. We have a fire in a dry thicket rising within women's eyes, uh, representing the love, uh, a woman's love that men must return. We have someone being quiet in the fern, listening to, the, to a prisoned cricket shake its terrible dissembling music in the granite hill. Uh, so a, a prison cricket um, singing, even though it's surrounded by, by prison walls. So it's interesting because in the first five lines, we have sort of what seems like the assertion of the poem, but then in the sixth line, um, things seem to change or a new suggestion seems to be made. So the beginning, it seems to be talking about um, passion. As uh, Paul Ramsey wrote in, in uh, 1970 in the Iowa Review, that, quote, the poem says that passion is destructive and frustration terrible and fearful. These are known truths, yet only in Shakespeare's sonnets known with fiercer passion than here. End quote. And interestingly, Harold Bloom also calls this poem fierce, uh, calling it a gnomic parable. <laughs> and he points out that in that sixth line, there seems to be a contrary statement, which is, quote, disputing the undoubtedly wise counsel not to love so intensely. So in the first five lines, it seems to be suggesting to love intensely is is a flaw it's a it's a problem but then after that in line six after the period at the end of line five the heart so subtle now and trembling what a marvel to be wise to love never in this manner and it goes on and then it concludes with the idea that that's like a cricket singing in a prison so as paul ramsey writes in the same iowa review essay the poem is in logical shape, a dilemma, a disjunction is offered. And one of the things that I'm fascinated by is this question that, that there is a, it seems like there's a line that is wisdom because to love beyond that line is the staff without the banner. And it's interesting that at the beginning, it talks about the idea of men who are loved in a certain way have the staff of the banner. Like they possess the staff themselves because of the way they're loved, or they possess the staff without the banner because of the way they're loved. That The passiveness of that is sort of interesting. But there's this line that seems to be saying, and that this line represents wisdom and someone can love beyond that. And to love, be, to love so passionately that you go beyond that line is the idea of the staff without the banner. And I'm trying to, I've thought a lot about what that image means. And it seems like there's this idea that with, if you don't have the banner, you're not communicating your place or where you're from or what you mean. There's no coat of arms. There's no signal that this is who we are. This is our defining characteristic, which is a, a subtle, fairly profound image or idea when talking about the concept of love and relationship. But then it seems to question that concept in the end because it's like a cricket singing in a prison, which is a prisoned cricket is kind of a interesting idea because 
on the on the one hand, it's easy to be cynical and be like, well, do crickets care if they're in prison? That's that's one of the first things that I think about when I think about this poem. Um, but that's a cynical, unfair place to go, I think. But it makes me wonder about that image. What a marvel to be wise, she says, to love never in this manner. And there's an exclamation point there. <laughs> that end stop is an exclamation point which suggests a sort of wonderment as if, how do you possibly not allow yourself to get beyond that point? How do you keep yourself from going beyond the point of wisdom? It's, it's a marvel that someone can do that. It's a marvel that someone can be quiet in the fern, like a thing quiet and still, like something that's dead. Listening to the prisoned cricket shake its terrible dissembling music in the granite hill. Mm. There's a lot going on in this poem. Um, and a lot of things to to reflect on, um, not the least of which is the question of the, the, the relationship between passionate love and and wisdom. And even if she doesn't give answers, that's a uh, that's a a relationship, um, a, a clashing of ideas that is worth our attention and our and our thought. So one more time on this fiftieth anniversary of her death is Louise Bogan's "Men Loved Holy Beyond Wisdom." Men loved wholly beyond wisdom have the staff without the banner. Like a fire in a dry thicket rising within women's eyes is the love men must return. Heart so subtle now and trembling, what a marvel to be wise, to love never in this manner. And to be quiet in the fern, like a thing gone dead and still, listening to the prisoned cricket shake its terrible dissembling music in the granite hill. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I will be back tomorrow with another poem for you.